good to go. So first, let me do some uh, shameless uh, publicity for the company I'm working for. Uh, it's called TAS. We are a leading embedded technology company. Uh, we're located in Leuven and Gent. And what we're doing is we're providing consultancy training. Uh, we're doing projects together with our customers and uh, doing outsourced services. Um, what we want to do is ensure that our, our clients in co-creation with us uh, can launch innovative and better quality products uh, products in a shorter time to market um, but another important point is that we believe um, that connected devices are going to improve the quality of our lives in an innovative way so that is uh, why we have made this um, Pico TCP it's a fully featured and a highly portable TCP IP stack um, it's designed really for full, uh, small footprint embedded systems so we're targeting the lower end uh, microcontrollers here um, up until uh, until bigger targets. So um, why should we be the reference TCP IP stack for the Internet of Things? Uh, that is because we have four areas which we focused on uh, during the development of Pico TCP and that is modularity, portability, performance and quality and I'm going to tell you uh, about all these four uh, focus areas a little more in detail. Uh, first uh, important for this conference I think is that we uh, our, that our software is free as in free speech um, so we have a dual licensing uh, policy in place uh, firstly we re released the Pico TCP stack under the uh, GNU GPL uh, version 2 um, but then uh, for the cursed customers who are not uh, really uh, very happy with this kind of licensing we also have a, a proprietary licensing uh, possible because we are a full copyright owner of Pico TCP, yes. It, it is V2 only. Um, the question was, is that V2 only or V2 and later? No, we're uh, sticking to GPL V2. So, uh, what does the stack look like? Um, this is the first point, modularity. Uh, we've built up the stack from the beginning as a ver very modular stack because uh, that's important for small embedded targets. Uh, there is one big bubble in the middle, which is the gray Pico TCP core. Uh, that one, of course, uh, is mandatory, but all the other uh, modules, modules around it are optional. And uh, you can choose whether you want to compile them in or not. Um, of course, there's uh, some dependencies between them, um, but that's logical, I think. Um, then just to give you an idea of uh, how big the stack is uh, in terms of flash memory, um, we try to compile the complete stack with uh, for an ARM target, which is the embed board in, in this case. Um, we compiled all the options in and then we get uh, somewhere around uh, 68 kilobytes for, uh, for all the modules you can see here. Uh, we think that's pretty small. Then let's see uh, how we can build this up in a modular way. So we removed everything except TCP. UDP and then we want to use only IPv4 because we're also uh, implementing IPv6 and both can be used at the same time. Um, when we when we built this full host mode config we we are somewhere around 30 kilobytes of flash. So how does it work? Uh, you select the bubbles, the modules um, and uh, you can do this um, just with a simple make command uh, to see all the all the available modules, just have a look inside our make file. Uh, I made the, the the command I used here for the 30 kilobyte version of the stack, which I have just showed you. Um, I have explicitly mentioned all the modules. If you if you don't man uh, mention any of them, you will just get all the modules. Um, and then for uh, for the small lip size, I've also uh, stripped uh, the module here to see what it will uh, finally take in your in your uh, flash, but uh, you shouldn't do that if you still want to link the library. Next point is portability. Um, we we thought of portability since the beginning, so we are really CPU architecture independent. Um, we run on 8-bit cores, on 16, on 32-bit, 64-bit, uh, little or big endian. Um, we have also uh, thought of the smaller systems which have no operating system at all, so bare metal, small operating systems or schedulers, things like free RTOS, um, real operating systems or more complete operating system up until um, real-time operating systems. 
uh, right now at this moment we have about uh, 10 or more different platforms which we already support and uh, we believe that it's very easy to port Pico TCP to a new to a new board uh, and I will show you this in a minute how it's done um, new operating systems should also be easy to support because we wrote our own uh, operating system abstraction layer so you uh, you should just implement this layer and all the rest stays the same to show you a uh, few of the architectures we, we support, 64-bit uh, is not mentioned because we only tested this on a uh, POSIX uh, client, so on a, basically on a Linux machine. Um, because we don't have any 64-bit uh, embedded targets uh, at our place. But then in 32-bit there's really a lot of ARM variants and uh, I think almost every month there's a new one uh, being introduced. It's really easy to port. So we have a few LPC chips, Cortex M0, M3, M4, a uh, lot of STM32 variants also. Uh, on the 16-bit uh, side, we have the, the MSP, low, low power uh, microcontroller from TI. Also the PIC24F, uh, which, which I will demo here uh, later on. Uh, this is a, a target re with really, um, really small resources. It has only 16 kilobytes of RAM and we're running a, a complete stack inside of that. And then uh, we have even have one 8-bit target, so that's uh, 80 mega 128, which is uh, doing painless TCP IP communication. More portability even, so the uh, communication chips. We, uh, we support this set of, of uh, communication channels. We have uh, Wi-Fi chips running, we have Ethernet, we have uh, USB CDC uh, drivers, and, and then a bunch a uh, bunch of virtual drivers which we use a lot during development or testing um, on uh, on Linux, for example. So we have Tuntop drivers, uh, VDE, uh, and libpcap, uh, which w uh, Wireshark is also using. Then uh, the op different operating system which we can run on. Uh, at this moment, uh, we we use a lot of bare metal targets. Uh, so there's uh, there's no operating system running, so uh, all the calls are non-blocking. Then Free Artos is, a, is an operating system which is popping up uh, a lot on, on the small devices. Uh, of course, we have the Embed Artos, which is uh, CMSYS uh, Artos compliant, so other CMSYS variants should, should work painlessly as well. Uh, and then we do a lot of testing on Linux and, and, and other POSIX targets as well. So what does our uh, OS abstraction layer do exactly? We have abstraction from the mutexes and the signals which are used for synchronization between the threads. Then the threads themselves or the processes are abstracted and we have a, a BSD a blocking socket interface. Now let's talk about the performance. These tests have been uh, run on the on the embed LPC uh, 16, uh, 7, 1768 I think. Uh, that's a target running at 100 megahertz. Uh, we get a throughput uh, for transmission of about 10 megabits and uh, downstream about 20 megabits, which is not bad for uh, an embedded target, I think. Uh, then the CPU time here is, is stated in an uh, in amount of uh, microseconds per loop because our stack uh, has a stack tick and you can really choose yourself uh, how, many, how many stack ticks or uh, the, the the period of one tick. So uh, in idle state we we have only 45 microseconds and then at the maximum throughput which was here the 10 megabits or the 20 megabits we have something like uh, 800 microseconds uh, per tick. Then the RAM is something uh, we're proud of also the dynamic memory uh, during these tests was maximum 8 kilobytes uh, of memory and on average around 4 kilobytes uh, the static memory here is the biggest one, it's 16 kilobytes and that's actually just because we're allocating um, a lot of uh, buffers, st statically uh, allocating a lot of buffer for the, for the driver so that we can buffer more incoming packets at once. You could also reduce that but then your throughput goes down uh, a little bit so it's a trade-off you should make uh, but you can get these figures even lower. Uh, and the stack, 2 kilobytes, and on this uh, pick target, we're even below 1 kilobyte of stack. Quality is something we're constantly focusing on, so um, the way we develop the stack is in an, an agile way, um, using Scrum, and uh, we, we do 
test-driven development, so we make the test beforehand and then we implement the code which should make these tests green. Uh, we're also having continuous in integration uh, and automated testing, so whenever something breaks, we get a big red screen uh, and everyone should jump on the problem to get this up and running as quickly as possible. At the right, you can see a kind of eco-label, but then for code quality. Um, this is a tool we're using, it's called TOBITX, and it gives you an idea uh, if you're uh, writing decent code or not. Uh, the first time we run this tool, I think we were some t somewhere around an E, and so uh, this gives you a constant reminder of uh, write good code, um, document it, don't make it too complex, uh, write unit tests, uh, and things like that. So uh, we're planning on getting uh, even higher, <laughs> hopefully. So. Uh, at the bottom, you see a, a big list of RFC standards that's uh, not intended to be readable, but just to show you how many standards uh, we comply to. And we tend to take these standards pretty literal, so uh, we don't make any loose implementations of these, like some other stacks do. Uh, we are also community driven, so uh, we're on GitHub. Please uh, visit us there. Uh, you're free to, to file any, any bug you can find. Uh, as, as I said before, uh, we are GPL v2 licensed, so uh, use our stack, fork it, um, do whatever you want with it, uh, as long uh, as you stick to the GPL. We're also on the on Olo, uh, which did, which does uh, analysis of open source projects, and um, there they're saying about PicoTCP that we uh, have a young but es established code base. Um, we started uh, first time on GitHub. First commit was uh, around. October October uh, 2012, uh, and uh, we have a large development team. We have stable uh, year-over-year year year commits, so we're, we're constantly working on this thing, and we're trying to, to make it uh, better every day. So now, uh, more, uh, more concrete or more in interesting is uh, how to port this, actually, to a new platform. Uh, that's easy. You need just three things. That's memory management which often isn't a big problem, so you just uh, grab the malloc and the free functions from your C library. Uh, you need a few timing functions, just two actually, uh, and then a driver for your hardware to get the packets really on your physical physical interface. So how do we do this? Memory management also is already said that you can use the malloc and the free functions from your C library uh, if they are decent enough, if they are av available. Uh, if you're using an operating system, then you could use the memory allocation from the operating system. Um, and we're also right now uh, implementing our own memory manager because we believe that we can uh, allocate and, and free memory uh, more efficient than most, most C libraries do. Uh, also, um, coping with fragmentation uh, when transmitting f small packets and, and things like that. So does, that's a new development that's on its way. Uh, I think it almost made its way uh, into the the stable stable. Uh, there is an active pull pull request. Great. So uh, next thing you need is timing functions. Um, the way we set this up is a, a timer uh, interrupt which will every uh, millisecond increment uh, in 64-bit in integer, so that we get a big enough time base. And then you need two functions, pico time and mass, and pico time, which will return the elapsed time in milliseconds or in seconds. So how do we do this? Uh, this is an example from um, from the embed uh, implementation, I think. Again, so uh, the pico zalloc is actually the the wrapper around the malloc function, which we'll use. So here you can see that it simply. Uh, uses the malloc from the C library, and a requirement for Pico TCP is that you really um, uh, zero all the memory explicitly, so if your C library doesn't do it, or you could have a calloc uh, available, for example. Next thing is the Pico uh, time MS. Uh, we're doing a trick here with 32-bit uh, integer, which is being incremented because it's a little bit faster, uh, and then we're detecting when it overflows, and the Pico time is just returning the same value divided by 1000. Uh, the last statement here is optional. Um, you could use that as uh, a blocking function would just wait until uh, another uh, millisecond has elapsed. But it's not mandatory. Now uh, we get down to the device driver. Uh, this API, we tend to make it very generic and very simple also. So there's only a few things needed. That's the um, Pico dev create. 
which will return a struct to a Pico device, and then you have its opposite at the bottom, which, if, which is Pico dev destroy, which will do all the cleanup. And then you have uh, a send function and a poll function, so you want to transmit a packet, or you want to see if there is new data available or not uh, on your physical interface. So the, the header is really simple. There's only two uh, functions exposed, which, uh, which are the, uh, the embed create and the embed destroy in this case. Uh, all the rest is, is underneath, which you can see here. So this is the create function, uh, which will allocate uh, some memory at the, at the top for the device driver. Then we will set the MAC address, uh, because this is an Ethernet device. OK. Uh, we will init the device and then set set a, a few function pointers which will uh, which will do the actual work. These are callbacks which are put into a struct. Uh, actually, what we what, what we've done here and we, what is a way that's easy to get started on new platforms is you make wrappers around the existing driver or implementation. Uh, in in the embed system, uh, we had uh, Ethernet read available, so this is actually just a, a wrapper around this function, and then you can get started with a one page. Uh, function or even a half page function and the uh, Pico TCP driver is uh, is working. Uh, the send function is just the same story. We're uh, using the Ethernet write and Ethernet send uh, API from the embed. So let's get down to a demo. Uh, what we've done here is we've taken a um, this is a small uh, MIDI keyboard. Uh, it, actually it's meant as a toy for uh, for the Wii, I think, but uh, it, it wasn't a great success, you, so you can find them really cheap on eBay. The great thing uh, is they have a, a MIDI port, which we will use. Uh, this MIDI port, uh, the MIDI protocol is uh, really simple, so you just need a level translator, and then with a the UART you can read out bytes which are on, on the MIDI uh, channel. And what we're doing is, you can see this here, is um, we take the keyboard, we, trans uh, we translate it to a serial uh, Serial stream, the microchip pick uh, controller will read this out. Use Pico TCP to put this on a, a Wi Fi channel. The, uh, the Wi Fi, over the Wi Fi, we are actually uh, transmitting a TCP stream with on top 0MQ, uh, which is a, a great message, message queuing protocol, which makes it really easy to, uh, um, to send and pu uh, uh, publish messages actually. So the the keyboard here is a publisher, and my laptop will subscribe to this uh, to this publisher and get every message that it that it makes available. So these messages will be the uh, MIDI notes which are played on the keyboard. And then I can receive them with a with a tiny Python script on my uh, laptop, and then uh, I put these bytes again into a virtual MIDI device. And this virtual MIDI device can then be hooked up to any synthesizer on my laptop. So I can show you the the, the uh, Python script which will uh, read these uh, these binary packages. So um, that that's about it. I think uh, there's a few more lines at the bottom. Uh, most of them are, are print functions just, just to see what's going on. So um, this is just to show how easy it is to, to do TCP IP uh, communication by using 0MQ. Yeah, um, I will uh, just power up the device uh, meanwhile and uh, let it connect uh, to the Wi-Fi network. And uh, I don't know if there is anybody here who can actually play the piano because I can't. So that we can, uh, so so that we can uh, do this demo. Is there anyone who wants to uh, play a few notes? Yeah, c uh, come along. Yeah, uh, except that. Uh, yeah, the board is uh, yeah, it's, it's USB powered indeed. Um, so the board is connected. I, I will now connect uh, the Python script, and you can see that it's immediately uh, receiving uh, MIDI messages. And uh, now I have this virtual MIDI device, and I should connect it to uh, to a synthesizer. And now you should be able to play the piano, maybe. Yeah, go on. Oh. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
Let's see. Now we'll make the connection again. Okay, go ahead. Great song. <laughs> Thanks. So I don't know if there's uh, any time left for uh, two minutes, two questions. Yes. So this is a great project. I'm very impressed, and I'd like to use it. But my project's GPLv3, so I can't. Why have you done that? Why do you think that's a good idea? Uh, that's a good question. We uh, we think uh, the V3 is a little bit too res restrictive for the purpose. Yeah, it's tr yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, I don't know. Maybe I can uh, call the help of an expert on this matter. <laughs> Uh, uh, I would reply with another question, actually. So what was the need uh, exactly of the GPL3 if we already had the two, which, is wo which was working pretty well? <laughs> I think we can take this offline. Okay, so <laughs> we, we're, going to, we're going to cut this discussion about GPL licensing. I think if, if, you, if you simply say GPL2 or later, and then I think the problem is solved, but we can discuss this later. Uh, thank you very much for the demo. If anybody wants to carry on playing the piano, we have an open slots after the next speech, but we're going to stick to our timing here. Thank you very much for this amazing piece of work. Awesome. We have a five-minute break, and then we have our last formal talk for the day.